You know, in laser cutting, even small and medium-sized job shops are required to cut a wide variety of materials, from thin, highly reflective materials to some extremely thick, mild steel plate. I'm with Frank Artiaga. He's head of product marketing for Vistronic Ick. And Frank, we're sitting in front of the Vistrint Fiber 3015. I understand this machine has the capability to go both ways. Yeah, so fiber is really known for cutting uh, thin material very fast. But one of the things that uh, has been new with uh, innovations in fiber laser cutting has really been the advent of being able to cut thicker materials. So here we have some samples. This is an inch and an, inch and an eighth of aluminum. This is a one inch stainless steel. It's a really nice finish on there. And then we also have one inch steel. So now we are able to run the complete spectrum of materials that typical job shops encounter on a daily basis from very thin. We see here, here's an example of uh, some brass, very thin brass. Again, fiber does very good job with thin material, but as you can see, also very good with the thicker materials. Now, Frank, historically, I've visited many shops that have seen this. There's a CO2 machine just cranking out the heavy stuff. Yep. And the fiber laser is the expensive finesse machine for thin, highly reflective materials cut. And are we going to see that, that thing disappear? Is CO2 finally going to die? Well, I think as we see more and more developments in R&D, for example, this is a result of R&D. Uh, we see that the fiber will be able to, to process the thicker materials. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even though you can cut this with the fiber, you're always still uh, retaining half of the cost to cut this because on a CO2 is always at least 50% more to cut the same material. So at this point, we're probably cutting it slower mm -hmm. than the CO2, mm -hmm. but if you look at the actual cost per part, mm -hmm. it's a lower cost per part on the fiber, even though you're going slower because you're using 50% less in operating costs. Okay, so the issue with all the consumables and the issues around CO2, is that driving the economics to a point where the CO2 just should be flat out replaced by fiber front? I think, like I said, at this point, it's, uh, it's right at that cusp of where new technology is coming in, as you see here, mm -hmm. that will eventually uh, make that possible, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, Frank, uh, how about process automation? Now, the machines are getting faster, we're getting more parts per sheet, you know, nesting software is improving all yes. the time. Uh, I see some shops where you can see that the weak link is how fast you can load and unload the machine. Yeah, so automation is critical. We have a, a cycle here on our automation that is about 60 seconds. So as long as your cycle of your sheet is longer than 60 seconds, the automation will be able to keep up. So it loads and unloads within 60 seconds, so which is really fast. And then we complement also with the press brake. Uh, we have a high speed press brake because you're doing a lot of productivity. Now you have to form it, you have to bend it. Otherwise all those parts keep accumulating at the press brake. So it's really the whole process goes downstream, not only here, but the amount of volume that you're producing has to be able to adapt downstream, for example, bending and welding and things like that. Hmm. Let's take a look at that press brake. Okay. Front of the expert 40 we just talked about briefly over at the uh, the, the laser cutting machine now it's the classic dilemma for a small to medium sized job shop low volume high mix similar parts mm -hmm. now we, we know it's it's an error prone situation it's a situation that's just fraught with risk if you need to get product out the door right. i understand you have essentially a, a, a training automation solution combined into this machine that eliminates a lot of these problems yeah so we have a couple of things first is the operator interface as you can see there that the control actually tells you at each step of the bending process what, what part of the part you're bending what aspect of the part you're bending and then also what side of the of the of the part is the bend occurring on uh, so it's very uh, intuitive and step based so you can see exactly what's going on the operator can zoom and and very much like a touch screen you would on a phone you can actually zoom and zoom out on your on your uh, display. The other part is too is we have a unit that has the on the laser we actually etch a uh, QR code, and then we use the scanner here to scan the QR code, and it'll automatically bring up the exact program 
that's required of the operator to go ahead and process parts. So in that high mix volume that we're talking about, uh, it's very easy to go through and correct and make the right programs for the material that you're bending. I've commonly seen a situation where a clipboard or a piece of paper is duct taped beside a machine with the program list. Right. Based on the thing. And we know what happens. Someone gets something out of sync. Yeah. So it comes off the cutter and it's the wrong sequence. The operator is thinking on autopilot and just programs the next program in, yeah. grabs a part, crash right. at the same time. So in this case, the operator is not actually keying in programming at all through a keypad or interface. Correct. Just so scanning with he's a scan. scanning with a scanner. It's, it reduces, eliminates basically any kind of error with the operator putting in the wrong program for the material mm -hmm. so we know that it's gone through the process from the late from the programming all the way through the laser mm -hmm. and now it's true here as well that we're going to get the right program for the right part does it change the way the program is written so the QR code is something that we uh, do in the, on the software side yeah. so we just put in a part number and the software generates the QR code puts it on and then the operator, the programmer can actually place that directly on the part wherever he deems would be the best place for that QR code. Mistake proof, high volume, high mix, and low volume, low mix bending by Stronics. 